Hello everyone, welcome to the Changemaker Academy. Now, once you have your campaign, you have a cause you believe in, you want to tell everybody about it. So you post up on social media, on Facebook or Instagram, but the only likes you get is from family or friends. How do you make that post go viral? My name is Carl Andreasen and this is the fifth and final week of our ongoing series of how to create strong campaigns. This week we're talking about communication. So once you have your campaign and you've planned all your actions, how do you tell your story and who do you communicate it to? This can be a really, really difficult and broad subject with everything from social media to press releases to different types of ways to reach out and talk to people. But in order to help us, Balaj from the Central European Office of Greenpeace is going to help us and take us step by step in how we create a good communication strategy. Hello guys and uh, welcome to the fifth week of your learning journey at the Massive Open Online Course at uh, the European Changemakers. My name is Balash Horvat and I'm going to uh, talk about uh, communications. And when I'm thinking about communications, today we are going to cover about the communication planning and the communication planning and from the communication planning cycle the design phase so if you think about communication uh, planning you always have this uh, cycle of, uh, of, of work from design to implementation to evaluation and uh, anytime your previous communication is affected uh, on your design phase so the evolution is super important um, to do uh, but before uh, you can or we will move into the communication planning, it's really important for you to, to look back to your previous uh, learnings uh, here at the European Changemaker uh, online course. Uh, because uh, without uh, having a campaign objectives and a strategy, without having a critical pathway or a power and the power analysis and the theory of change, uh, your communication strategy is not going to be uh, strong enough. But if you covered all of them, then you can jump into the design phase. So uh, before I do so, uh, I have to tell you that I'm uh, working uh, for Greenpeace in Central and Eastern Europe. So what I'm going to cover here is the method, the way what, how we are planning our communication here at uh, Greenpeace. Uh, these tips and this way of planning are universal, uh, but please use it uh, wisely and always tweak to your uh, realities. So uh, let's get started. First of all, you have to identify your uh, objectives. And on objectives, you don't have to uh, think like super, uh, super far-fetched uh, things. Just keep in mind why you want to communicate. So that's super crucial and important because in the whole uh, implementation phase, because without having clear objectives or without you knowing why you want to communicate, your communication is going to be vague and you are not going to uh, reach uh, your audiences. Uh, I'm just uh, telling you an example, like uh, when we think about communication, the first is uh, always, less. okay, let's send out a press release or let's uh, post this on Facebook. Okay, great, both are, could be uh, great tactics, uh, but without you knowing your objectives, and a few other things we are going to cover later on, uh, it might not be f as effective as uh, you think it will be. Uh, we are using the model, uh, the so-called model SMART uh, objectives. These are the specific, measurable, achievable, uh, realistic or relevant and uh, time-bound uh, objective definitions. Uh, so I'm not going to go super detail into it, but it's really important that you, your objective should be focused, narrow down, and you always know why you are communicating. Uh, to do that, uh, we prepared an exercise for you, uh, the communication objective worksheet. You can download it uh, and you can do the, do the exercise and that will help you to identify your own objectives. So uh, this is the first part, which is super important and crucial. And for the second part, uh, let's go into the audiences and let's dig deeper into the audiences, uh, who you want to deliver uh, your messages, what we will design later on. So the audiences itself are referring to the group, uh, what the campaign is trying to, to influence. 
uh, they should be really specific. Uh, they should be really narrowed down because general public, uh, it's not a target audience. There's no such thing as general public. Uh, you really have to narrow down uh, who you want to, uh, who you want to uh, communicate uh, with. Uh, in generally, when we're thinking about target audiences uh, or audiences, sorry, there are three uh, type of audiences: the target, uh, the influencers, and the opponents. The target are the main uh, audience groups. Uh, this is what your campaign wants to influence, so that's um, the most important one. The influencers are the ones who are surprise, surprise, influential uh, to your target audiences, and. Uh, and they can support your campaign objectives and your opponents are the ones who are already active in the field or you are or they are going to be active uh, later on uh, if you identify your audiences uh, the next step is to understand them so uh, you should think about how do they interact with you with their peers uh, how do they consume uh, uh, their news, uh, what are their habits, uh, what do they like, what do they dislike. Maybe they like your topic but dislike your organization or you personally. So that's something you also have to keep in mind. Uh, you also have to uh, do a research and the research, uh, don't think about immediately some academic research or super expensive focus groups. They are great, uh, but you can also do online surveys. You can also use a simple search and research on the internet. There's a lot of information available uh, for different target audience groups. For example, if your audience group is in the, in the millennials, there's a lot of studies around millennials, how they are consuming their media, what is their behavior and their attitudes towards some brands. So there's a lot of information online. Do your research before you uh, before you narrowing down uh, your audiences and uh, identifying their behaviors uh, we also prepared an exercise uh, this is the target audience profile table this is a simple sheet which helps you with profiling so if you do your research uh, you know uh, who you want to to to, to communicate with then uh, you can narrow here it uh, it down so please uh, download this table and uh, do the exercise before uh, you can go into the next uh, next uh, part of a communication plan and now we will uh, covering about messaging uh, messaging are also but it was as i said it's the whole strategy or the whole design phase it's contains super important parts and the messaging are also also really really important because uh, if you know your audience you know why you want to communicate then you have to create the messages uh, what you are using and what is appealing uh, to your to your target audience so uh, this is also really important that uh, how you are actually going to deliver your campaign messages to your target audiences. Uh, there are some three tips how to create uh, such messages. Uh, in general, it's super important to, to limit your messages into uh, one to three top line overarching messages. Don't try to tell the whole story uh, from Adam and Eve. Uh, to your audiences, try to narrow it down. And if you if you could narrow down the top line messages, you can go into uh, into into each and single message what should be focused and contains no more than fifteen or twenty words. Uh, why is that? If you go to a protest, for example, and you want to put your top line message on a banner, it's really important that you should be able to tell the story in a few words. And it's also much more easier to your audience to to remember. Uh, it has to be compelling to them and not to you. So keep in mind, if you like your message, but you are not part of the target audience group, uh, then you are most probably have to revise it. And it's, uh, and it's a really good uh, idea to involve someone in, from the target audience who is actually doing a reality check uh, on, your, on your messages. In general, always try to be positive and always try to personalize uh, your, your messages. It's much more easier to people to relate to a personal story from the same target audience group. Uh, and also the positive messages are helping uh, to spread among um, the audiences. Please avoid acronyms or shortened words, what you are using only. Try to think about 
uh, the language what your target audience is using. For example, if they're talking about uh, global warming, uh, when they are thinking about climate change, then you should also use this word, uh, no matter how scientifically it's, uh, it's not accurate. Try to think with your audience head. Uh, but your message should include a fundamental statement and the value of you and the mission of you. So this is also something you have to keep in your back in your head and, um, and deliver. But uh, after all of this, uh, my next tip is to keep it simple. I know it's, uh, it's really tricky, but if you sit down and do some exercise, uh, then you are going to be able to, to do that. Uh, for that, uh, we have a worksheet the message creation worksheet which will uh, helps you to refine your uh, your messages ideally uh, you can uh, you should do this in a group but you can also do it alone so download it and do your uh, exercise okay so now uh, we already got the objectives we already got the target audiences and uh, we already got the messages. You did all three exercises. So now you can uh, move into the next step, which is identifying the right channels. Uh, we are in a lucky situation in 2019 that there's lots of lots of different channels available for us. And most probably each target audience uh, have their own different set of channels, not just one set of channels but you really have to choose this correctly because uh, the key messages what are delivered across the right channel uh, we have will have the the greatest impact and influence on your target audience and uh, and generate uh, change so when i'm thinking about channels there's a a lot of variety of channels, uh, for example, the digital channels, the social media, uh, but not only Facebook or Twitter, Def depends on your target audience. If you think about Generation Z, they are on YouTube, Instagram and Snapchat. So this is maybe their main channel. If you're thinking about an audience who is still consuming their news from print media, then you should consider to, to build up a media list, organizing press events, uh, or if you have a lot of money, you can buy ads uh, in print or on billboards. Uh, but you can also go to protest uh, on non-violent or direct actions, which you already learned about before. Uh, you can go out with banners, you can organize a flash mob. Uh, you can also, uh, also get involved in... Uh, in, uh, in events as a speaker so if your target audience is there then you could also be also be there as uh, as well so this is also something that you can use uh, the internet uh, to search on uh, but also common sense uh, helps a lot and uh, another uh, hint is that you uh, go into specific groups online where your target audiences there are, then uh, you will have a better understanding, get involved in discussions, talk with them, ask questions, and you will understand them, uh, them much, much, much better. Okay, uh, I think we more or less uh, ready to put all this information into a strategy. Uh, so once again, objectives, you get them, you did your exercise. Uh, target audiences, you got your target audiences, hopefully you did the exercise. Uh, messages, you tweak your messages to your target audiences and you were thinking about the channels, how to deliver that. So with these four, you can start your, uh, your uh, communication strategy. Again, these are guidelines, but usually these guidelines helps you to create a proper communication strategy. Uh, which helps you to deliver your campaign goals. So first, when you start, it's really important that you shouldn't forget about your campaign goal because communication objectives and communication alone, it shouldn't be your goal. So it helps you to achieve your goal. So always start with a three, four paragraph of a situation analysis, go then into the campaign and project objectives and only after that go into your communication objectives. If they are smart objectives are great, but if it's more uh, simple uh, for you, what is helping for your own uh, campaign, it's also good. It doesn't have to be smart. But the messages, the top line messages is really important to, to benefit that goal, what you want to achieve, and also uh, to be compelling to your target audiences. So your messages should be created for your uh, target audiences. 
uh, and there are a lot of guiding questions uh, about uh, the, for the decision maker or or the influencers. But it's it's in the in the in the sheet of the of the target audience creation worksheet. You should also list your opponents uh, because uh, they are really important in your project. So what are their messages? What is already there? What is your answer to their messages? So also, also research your opponents and don't forget about them. There are different other stakeholders who we might not going to communicate with, but also it's important to keep in mind because maybe sometimes they are going to be uh, our target audiences. Uh, and the elements of a good communication strategy are contains a media strategy, a digital strategy, and the visual communication strategy. Uh, maybe you are not going to put all this together, but on digital, if you are using that channel, you should keep in mind how you are going to, to reach uh, or how you are going to use uh, digital channels to reach your communication objectives, thus your uh, campaign objectives in the long run, the same goes to media and the visuals. Visual storytelling is really important, especially if you are using online tools. Uh, but again, depends on which channels did you pick and which channels uh, would you like to use. Uh, you could also really go into more details uh, when you have the proposed communication activities and materials, what are the key dates, uh, what are the basic tools and materials, what is needed. Uh, into this, uh, this, um, this strategy. You should also list the opportunities and the risks and the risks, how you are going to mitigate them uh, communication-wise, what is going to be your answer, how you are going to, to reflect on that. Uh, and also, uh, you might work alone, so there's a lot of thing uh, what you have to learn. So always list out the assets what you got. Uh, and it's, I'm not just keep thinking about technical tools, but also knowledge or money. So if you want to, uh, want to create an animated video for social media for your target audience, then you have to know how to do that or outsource it if you have the budget, but also list it and keep it in mind if you need a two months or a two weeks of training on a specific skill, and you are alone and can't outsource, you have to allocate time on that. Uh, and at the end, uh, it's reflecting back uh, from the beginning uh, when I was talking about that communication planning is a cycle. And so the last point in your strategy should be the evaluation because the, the lessons learned in the evaluation is directly uh, reflects uh, to your next communication planning phase because that's an on never ending and ongoing cycle. So all previous communications are the base for the future communication and the future, future planning. Uh, we have also created a template, uh, the communication strategy template for you with guiding questions much more detailed uh, how I now went through it. So you can also sit down, ideally in a group, and uh, put all uh, the previous uh, findings uh, into it, and then you are going to have a proper communication uh, strategy. So uh, this is it. In like 15 or 20 minutes, uh, I was, uh, went through uh, the communication uh, strategy design phase. Uh, but for you it might take, uh, and for everyone, it might take uh, days or weeks. Uh, the most important thing is to sit down and think about it. So think about uh, your objectives, why you want to communicate, how you want to communicate, who the audience is, who you want to communicate with, and, 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 and on uh, what kind of message you want to deliver to them. To, to make change for them to understand why you are and what you are communicating with and, and identifying the right channels because without the right channels you can have the best top line messages, uh, the most narrowed target audiences, the best objectives, but if your channels are not right, your message is never going to deliver. So take your time, sit down, use your templates, use the templates and think about uh, your communication uh, strategy. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, if you have any question or you want to share a story uh, from your own campaign, I'm really curious about. So you can contact me uh, via LinkedIn. You will find uh, my contact details below. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Thank you for watching week five. And that is it for our campaign strategy series. Uh, we hope to do more of these types of series in the future. So please 
hit the subscribe button and follow us to stay updated for any future video material. Uh, if you want to learn more about communications, in the description below you can find step-by-step -step exercise sheets that will help you build the campaign plan that Balaj was mentioning. And as always, if you want to be part of a community of changemakers supporting each other into creating more effective campaigns, please sign up for our online Facebook group today. Thank you very much.